Hey groups, I hope you guys are doing good. I can't believe it. We are into May already, and I think we only have two weeks uh, left after this week, so I hope you're able to enjoy um, the rest of this year and the warmer weather that is finally in Michigan. We get a glimpse of why we live in this state again. So um, I hope you guys are able to enjoy some of that. Uh, this week, um, and over the course of this month, we have been looking at a series on judges. Um, and it's it's been a series where we looked at really everyone does what they see fit in the time of the judges. Um, last week was all about doom and gloom and like they just can't get anything right. Um, and this week we have a break in that where we look at stories of Ruth um, and stories of Hannah. Um, And it was really fantastic to look at these two stories. Uh, They were in the time of the judges. Ruth actually starts the book that in the time of the judges, right? So we can bring it in there. Uh, But it really is a a good story. Um, It's one of my favorite stories where destruction happens, right? Naomi's husband dies and then her two sons die and they're left with nothing with Naomi and her two daughter-in-laws. Um, but what we found through the teaching this week is there, there was a silver lining. Um, and for them, it was Boaz. And what Naomi never fully got to understand is that out of Ruth and Boaz would be the start of the line um, that would always be on the throne, um, would always be on the throne of Israel. And what we find is that a few generations later, uh, King David comes out of the line. And if you know anything about that line and what comes after it, uh, Jesus is actually like the great, great grandson of King David. Um, And what what I just love about this story is that God continues to work regardless of the circumstances around us, how bleak they may look. So, Um, I hope you enjoyed the stories this weekend. Um, Kids, if you're in the room, there's some kids questions on on the sheet and your parents or leaders can walk you through those. And then adults, we have got some questions for you guys that we'll jump right into. All right, groups, question number one. Naomi experienced deep sorrow, loss, and grief in the passing of her husband and two sons. While in mourning, she could not see any of the silver linings. Um, on the other side of grief, uh, on the other side of grief, have you ever seen a silver lining? So a lot of times, if you've been in Naomi's boat um, in grief, it is hard to see where God may be moving or what God may be doing. If you're on the other side of that, have you ever seen a silver lining, a place where God brought you something good out of the pain or out of that loss? For question number two, I want you guys to start by reading Ruth 1, 16 and 17, and then answer uh, these following questions. All right, after reading that, here's the questions. Why do you think Ruth decided to go with Naomi instead of returning to Moab. Because remember, Moab would have been uh, where Ruth was raised. So uh, Ruth would have had a place to go back home and her dad most likely would have taken care of her there. Her old family would have taken care of her. Why did she go with Naomi? And what did it cost Ruth to stay with Naomi? Um, And what do you think caused her to take such a risk um, in this and have such a conviction to stay with Naomi? Question number three. What is a kingsman redeemer? We see that language come out in the story of Ruth. Um, How does the story of Ruth and the role of the kingsman redeemer point to the good news about Jesus Christ? Um, And if you are unfamiliar with some of this language and don't really know how it points to Jesus Christ, there's a few scripture references in in your notes there. Uh, Take a look at those and see how um, the Old Testament actually comes 
alive in the New Testament when we see how those correlate. So take a little bit of time, look at a few of those passages and have that conversation about what a Kingsman Redeemer means. All right, number four, I want you to start by reading Ruth 4, 13 to 17, um, and then I'll have some questions for you. Question number one after reading that, and I may have already um, hinted at it as we talked before. So, I hope you listen to that because you'll answer this easier then. What do you notice about Ruth's descendants? Um, That specifically comes um, out of that Ruth passage we just had you read. And if you're looking for a comparison, look at Matthew 1, 5 through 16 for some reference. And then what does this tell you about being the outsider? When we look at these stories, there's, there's outsiders that... Um, really rise to the surface. Ruth was an outsider. She had no man to take care of her. Um, She at that time was considered property. And yet Ruth is a story that we know so well. She's an outsider. What does this tell you about outsiders? And who else is in the Matthew genealogy? uh, When you look at that, who else would have been an outsider? Question number five. Uh, In the beginning of the group's questions, we talked about Ruth, and we're going to wrap it up with the second part of it, that second character that we introduced to the story this weekend, Hannah. Um, What can we learn from Hannah through her hardships? Um, Is perseverance in prayer hard for you? Does hardships typically turn you toward or away from prayer? All right, number six, I want you guys to start by comparing these two stories between the story of Ruth and the story of Hannah. What's different about them? What is similar? What do you see in these two? And where do you see God doing something in these stories? Where does, where does his presence become noticeable? How do you know that God is on the move in some way in their stories? Question number seven, um, and this is actually the challenge for this week, um, is to look at the people around you in need of care and support and respond to them accordingly. Um, And I love this because when we look at the story of Ruth and Naomi, um, if Boaz didn't respond in care, uh, this story would have ended very differently. Right, So look at the people around you, even pray and ask God to put people in your lives who need someone to care for them um, and allow the Holy Spirit to convict you of, of being in situations that people need care. So be open. Don't just ask for it. Be open to respond when that moment comes in. Um, I'm excited uh, for you guys and I hope you live into this this week. Um, if you got time, uh, we'll jump into digging deeper section here shortly. All right, groups, if you have got some time and want to spend some time in the Digging Deeper section, um, it really is good this week. It looks at the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Um, We see from Ruth, uh, the very beginning, we start tracking a lot of the genealogy, and we can go way before then. But we see here that God promises uh, that there will always be uh, somebody on the throne from that line. Um, And we can map that all the way back to that. And uh, I want you guys to look at some of the forefathers, even going back to the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and looking through their genealogy and seeing if there's other outsiders. I think it's so fascinating to see where Jesus came up out of and who was used in this story. Um, So if you got some time, 
take a look at that. There's some good readings that you guys can spend some time with. Otherwise, I hope you guys continue to enjoy your May. Uh, we've got two weeks left for content, and then we're going to be breaking for the summer. Um, but be on the lookout. We'll be sending stuff out in the next few weeks um, to give you guys some options to do throughout the summer because I, I don't know about you. I love my group and I don't want to stop seeing them for three months. So we're going to be hanging out. We're going to be doing some things and we'd love to set you guys up for success for this summer, even though there's not content coming out all the time. So hope you guys have a great week. We will see you soon.